Well, I would have to say that non-hypothetical Dell would not talk to that person because this is New York City <laughs> and one must be civil. But hypothetical Dell, incensed by the the, the infraction against the, the sacred knowledge of classics, would probably ask them what they thought it meant and to see what tendrils come off of the cosmos in their own experience because we've all encountered the word. It's a word that we don't nearly understand the richness of, it, a word that can simultaneously mean order and, 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 and the world but also ornament and cosmetics and, and embellishment and I would try to share my enthusiasm and make my enthusiasm about these ideas a bridge to try to teach them or to augment their own understanding. Um, so I would, I would just point out that the cosmos and cosmetics are the same root and that we have to think not just about order, but the ornament and the surface image that we actually encounter in order to see order. And I might say something as simple as the, point out the fact that it's only in the last 50 years that we can look up in the sky and actually fully understand what it looks like three-dimensionally. Whereas for most of human history, we have no depictions, artistic depictions of the heavens because it's just a collection of dots. They understood the geometry, but they didn't have all of these telescope, all these uh, satellite images that can actually create these vast landscapes and, on planets. And so I would point out that cosmos for most of history was something that we only saw as two-dimensional and that we had to infer as two-dimensional. And so that the superficiality of most of people's encounter with the order of things was thought not unsimilarly to a two-dimensional painting. And it required enormous imagination to fill in the dots.